everybody, happy Friday and welcome to the Jaden Stitches Show. Earlier this week we were live streaming and talking about crochet for Halloween and one of the little projects I introduced you guys to was this shy little guy. He's a simple little ghost I crocheted and a lot of you really liked him. So today we're going to show you how to make this granny square ghost. Yeah, he's a granny square. He's a granny square with a little head, nice simple project, super use of your scraps and they whip up fairly quick so you can hang up a whole bunch in the window in no time flat. Now because we've already covered granny squares several times here on the show, I'm still going to take you through this whole project row by row, just like we always do, but I'm going to move through the granny square a little faster than I normally do. So the granny square that we're using is the solid color granny square tutorial, and we'll make sure there's a link to that in the description box down below if you need a little extra help going through that portion of the pattern. And if you're a complete newbie and you've never made a granny square before, and you find you need a little extra help, we've got a complete beginner's granny square tutorial as well. We'll also link that down below and we move really slow through the whole concept of a granny square. So if you feel you need a little extra help, we got it for you. So let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table and we will scare up a little granny square ghost together. For each of the little granny square ghosts that you may want to make, you're going to want around 40 yards or 30 grams of a medium size 4 yarn. I'm using acrylic for this, but of course you can use wool or cotton or whatever you may have lying around. If you want to add a little face, you're going to need a little bit of black yarn too. You're going to want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle. Today's hook is a 5.5 millimeter also known as an I or a 9 in the US, a size 5 in the UK. You're going to want a little bit of stuffing, just to stuff his head, and in order to hang him, a needle and thread. If you want the hanging to be completely invisible, then fishing line works just as well. And if you're not already subscribed to our channel, take a moment to click that button and the bell so you never miss another episode. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. We're going to begin at the very top of the head of our little ghosty, and we want to start with a cinch circle. Once you've chained one to secure your circle, we're going to begin with the single crochet stitch. We're going to single crochet eight times into our cinch circle. Make sure you're working over top of that short tail so that we can cinch the whole circle shut when we're done. Once you have eight single crochet, grab the short tail, cinch your circle shut nice and tight, and we're going to work in the round. So you're going to find the first single crochet you made, and get your hook into it any way you can there. We're not joining our rows with a slip stitch, we're just going to keep going. So we're going to increase now from eight stitches to 16. We're going to work two single crochet into that first stitch and each stitch around. So two single crochet into each stitch, you'll have 16 stitches at the end of row two. At the end of row two, you'll have 16 stitches. We've got one more row of increasing to do. We're not joining our row. We're going to continue working into the first stitch of what was row two. It now becomes the first place we work the first stitch of row three. Into that stitch, we're going to work two single crochet and then single crochet once into the stitch after that. And that's the little repeater pattern all the way around. You're going to work two single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet once into the stitch after that. We've now worked that little set twice. You want to repeat that little thing two, one, two, one, six more times, and you'll have a total of 24 single crochet at the end of row three. At the end of row three, we have 24 stitches all the way around, and now we're going to work three rows of just straight single crochet. So just single crochet into each stitch all the way around for three more rows, and that will start to turn our little circle into a bit of a cup shape. If you find you tend to crochet a little on the loose side, try to tighten up a bit here, because we do want to create a rounding ball effect. At the end of row six, you should still have 24 stitches in every row and something that looks a bit like this. So it's turned into a bit of a cup. You can stick your fingers up in there and sort of stretch out the top two rows or top three rows and that will help to make it a little more rounded, a bit like the bottom half of a ball. We are now going to begin to decrease. So we're going to re work the reverse of the increase stitches. The next row we're going to do, number seven, we start with a decrease. So we're going to single crochet 
two stitches together and single crochet into the next stitch. You're going to work that seven more times. So single crochet two stitches together, single crochet into the next stitch, that's two sets. Do that six more times now and we'll be down from 24 stitches to 16. Once you've worked single crochet two together, single crochet into the next stitch, all the way around eight times in total, so there's eight sets of that little decrease pattern, you'll be down to 16 stitches. We're going to decrease once more. We're going to single crochet two stitches together eight times in total. So you're going to single crochet two stitches together all the way around and you'll be down from 16 stitches to 8. Once you're down to 8 stitches, we're going to do a row of just straight single crochet. So we're going to single crochet in each stitch all the way around. This isn't going to change your stitch count, you're still going to have 8 stitches. We're just going to give our little ghost a bit of a neck before we stuff his head. So there's the little head of our ghost. We're going to go ahead and add the granny square portion to our ghost here before we go back and stuff his head and put on a face and close in his neck. So we are going to launch right into a full-on granny square from this position. You should have eight stitches at the end of your last row. We worked our way down to eight stitches and then did a, sing a row of just straight single crochet. So our, our little guy's going to have a bit of a neck when he's done. And now we're going to slip stitch into the next stitch to finish off what we consider the head of our ghost and we're going to start a granny square. Chain three at the beginning of every row counts as a double crochet. So we're going to chain three to begin and into that same stitch that we just slip stitched into you're going to work two more double crochet. Chain two, we need a corner space and that's going to be it. Skip one stitch, find the next one and work three double crochet or a shell into it. And I know it might be a little bit tricky because we're working in a small space. So just take your time, be kind of patient with yourself. It will get much bigger as we go on. There's three double crochet or one shell, chain two for a corner space, skip the next stitch, find the next one and work a shell into it. You're going to repeat this twice more. So you want a total of four shells or 16 double crochet at the end of this first row of our granny square. Don't forget to chain two in between your shells. At the end of that first row of the granny square, you should have three double crochet or one shell repeated four times. So there's one, one, two, three, four. Each shell is separated by two chains and you've skipped one stitch in between. When you get back round to the beginning, make sure you chain your last two. You have one left to sketch, skip. We're skipping this little um, this little thing down here we call the false stitch, it sits at the bottom of the chain three. Just ignore that completely. You're only concerning yourself with that stitch and we're skipping it. Find the top of your chain three and join with a slip stitch. That is the first row of your little granny square all done. It's kind of difficult to see because it's sitting under the head of a little ghost, <laughs> but it's going to get bigger as we go on. We're going to slip stitch now across the next two double crochets, so you're slip stitching across them because we want to get to a chain two space. So slip stitch right into that chain two space. You know me, I love to start my granny squares every row in a corner. So whether I'm changing colors or not, and I'm not because I want this whole thing to be white, I want to start in a chain two corner and that allows me to start every row with a corner. Every row of a granny square starts with a chain three. That chain three counts as a double crochet. Work two more double crochet into that chain two space. And because it's a chain two space and it becomes a corner, we want to finish it before we go. 
So chain two more and work another shell or three double crochet into that same chain two corner. So this is your basic granny square. If you need more help with this, we've got a couple of granny square tutorials and we'll link them both in the description box down below. Chain one, before you leave that corner, jump to the next space. It's a chain two space, which means it's a corner. So you work shell, chain two, shell into it. Don't forget to chain one before you leave and repeat this pattern all the way around. You'll have eight shells, four chain two corners, and four chain one spaces at the end of row two. Once you've worked shell, chain two, shell, chain one in each of those corner spaces all the way around. That brings you back to the beginning, so you should have shell, chain two, shell, chain one. You're going to find the top of the chain three that began the whole row and join with a slip stitch to it. It's a little easier now to see that granny square. You can take your four corners and pull them out. And we're going to do exactly what we did at the end of the last row. We're going to slip stitch across these two stitches and into the chain two corner space so we can start row three on a corner. Every row begins with chain three. Chain three counts as a double crochet. You're in a corner space, so you work two more double crochets to finish that first shell. Chain two for the new corner space. Work three more double crochet into the same corner because you're working on a corner space. Chain one. And the next space we come to is the chain one space that we created in the last row. So this is the side of a square. We only want to work one shell into it. So chain one spaces get one shell. So three double crochet into that chain one space. Chain one for a spacer. The next corner space you get to, or I should say the next space you get to is a chain two corner space. So we work shell, chain two shell, chain one into that space. And you're gonna continue this now all the way around. Make sure your chain one spaces, there'll be one on every side. Get one shell and a chain. And every chain two space, and there's four of them because they're corner spaces. Get shell, chain two, shell, chain one. When you get to the end of row three, or round three of your granny, every chain two corner space should have shell, chain two, shell, chain one. Every single chain space should have one shell in it. Don't forget your chain one. And you'll have a total of 12 shells all the way around. And if you hold it or even sit it flat on your work surface, you should see that little square happening. Don't forget to chain one after your last shell. Find the top of the chain three that began the whole thing and just slip your hook into it anywhere you can. <laughs> Join with a slip stitch. And that is it. Our little ghostie only needs three rows <laughs> of a granny square underneath him to make him look like he's going to fly away. But of course, if you're familiar with the granny square pattern, you know you can continue to add rows to make his little skirt as long as it needs to be. But we're just going to do three on this little guy today. So you can grab your scissors, fasten off your yarn. You don't need much tail. Grab your yarn needle and just weave your tail in back and forth across some of those stitches to make sure it doesn't want to come undone. Next, we want to stuff his little head and that will give us sort of a canvas to put his face on and then eventually string him up. So for stuffing, you can use pillow stuffing, quilt bat, uh, chopped up t-shirt, socks, that might be a little heavier, so keep that in mind. Uh, but I mean, it's not a very big space, so it won't be too, too heavy. And um, you can even use leftover bits of fabric or uh, yarn. It's best to try and keep the colors light or even white since we're using white yarn to make our little ghosty uh, because other colors you use may show through. Now that might be a fun design choice <laughs> depending on the kind of look you're going for for your little ghosty. Uh, but there you go. Just stuff enough up into that little head to make sure that it's round and even. Remember, you're going to be hanging these little guys so you don't need a lot of stuffing and you want it to be nice and light. Then you can pull down on those four corners of your little granny square and you can see that little ghost shape is definitely coming into to form here. Now we want to just make sure none of that stuffing comes out. So cut yourself a long length of white yarn, grab your yarn needle, and we're just going to cinch up the bottom of his head. Take a length of yarn and your yarn needle, 
grab your little ghost, flip them upside down. You're going to bring your needle from inside to the outside through any one of those neck rows. So any one of the stitches along that neck row. Leave a little bit of string hanging out the back. And then you're just going to weave your needle in and out through those stitches in that last little neck row all the way around. Once you're all the way around, pull nice and tight. Make sure you hang on to that other string just so the whole thing doesn't come out on you. And you should get a nice round ball shape. You can bring your yarn back through to the inside. Pull it nice and tight again. You should not have any sort of space showing through there. Then you can knot those two ends together and pull the whole thing up inside the head of your little ghost. So it acts as a little extra stuffing and you don't have to worry about weaving in your ends. Once we're all cinched up and nice and tidy, if you want to add a face, you can grab a little bit of black yarn, thread it up in your yarn needle, and we can add a couple of eyes and a little mouth. So it's easier once you have a stuffed head to sort of decide where you want to put the face on it. Bring your yarn in through a space between stitches somewhere at the top of the head and out where you want your first eye to be. And because this is just a little ghost, we want to make a simple little face. You're going to leave a little bit of black yarn up near the top. You're just going to hop over top of one stitch and bring your yarn needle out in the next place that you want your eye to sit. So you're going to do both eyes at the same time. So just a simple little, <laughs> simple little dot there. And then if you want a mouth, I like to put my mouths in between my eyes. Bring your yarn needle out where you want the corner of his little mouth to be. I like to give myself a little bit of slack hop over maybe two stitches and bring my needle out on an angle so that I'm between those two stitches but one row below so that I can catch the yarn and this is how you make a simple little smile. You're going to go over top of your yarn but back through the same hole down here. So back through the same little space that you came out with. Make sure you're over top of that yarn smile. Bring your needle back out through the top, same place you brought your yarn in. Don't pull too tightly, but if you feel your yarn smile is a little on the loose side, then you can just tighten it up a little bit. And there you go, a simple, cute little smiling ghost face. You can trim your yarn, knot your two ends together. And because you don't want a whole lot of black color showing through to the side of your white head. Make that knot nice and tight and small. So nice and tight and small. Trim up whatever's left. <laughs> it looks like he's got a little forehead hair. <laughs> and then you can just tuck that knot into the head of your ghost and you shouldn't have too much black yarn showing through. Now all we need to do is add his little hanger and he's ready to spook a window. Now you're gonna take your thread or your fishing line, whatever it is you're using, and you're gonna double up your two threads so that your two ends are together. I know that's hard to see because it's very small, but both my ends are together. This is one length of thread, both my ends are together, and I'm gonna knot the two ends together so that I've folded it in half, basically. You don't need a needle necessarily for this. You can actually use your, your yarn needle. So if it's easier for you to see using a gigantic loop like this one, then I recommend you do that. Just thread the whole thing through your loop. Grab the top of the head of your little ghost. Just slip your yarn needle underneath a couple of stitches. A loop doesn't need to be too much. 
pull it through so that you've got the, yarn, the, the thread sticking through on both sides and then you're going to find the loop. So here's where the thread is bent in half, so that's the top loop. You're going to grab the little knot at the bottom, thread one through the other and then pull and you've attached your thread to the top of your little hanging granny square ghost and now you can hang him from the ceiling or hanging him in a window and he's all ready to go. None of your stuffing is going to come out because we cinched up the bottom. And if you wanted to, you could even hang little bells or something off of all four of those corners just to act as little weights and also to maybe make him ring a bit when the wind catches him. <laughs> <laughs> and there you go! A couple of little granny square ghosts! It's a fun, simple little project. It's a fun way to play with a granny square and you can use up some of your white yarn. Doesn't matter whether it's cotton or acrylic or wool and scare a few up to hang in your window for the upcoming Halloween season. I hope you enjoyed making this along with us today and we will see you soon here on the Jade and Stitches show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty and have an awesome week everybody. Bye. Hi everybody. Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe!